like the rest of you, we're trying to make sense of this crazy thing that we call life. I'm RJ. I'm Khalil. I'm Chasmine. And welcome to Try Not to Overthink It. Every day we find ourselves discussing many different topics ranging from trending news to the state of our society as a whole. You name it, we've probably talked about it. And after many heated debates, we decided to expand and share our conversations with you and give you a therapist as well as a social worker's point of view and hopefully get your input. If this is your first time here, we would like to thank you for checking us out and we hope that you'll stay, become part of the tribe and join uh, the conversations. So today what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about living in your purpose. Um, for a lot of us, we tend to be just existing in life. Um, existing, you know, like just surviving from, from this day into the next day into the day after that and the day after that. Um, we're working, working a dead end job for some of us. Um, we're working a job that is just sucking the life out of you. Um, that is just slowly just whittling away at you. You know, we'll sit around, you know, around the water cooler, the break room, uh, the office and complain, you know, but again, you know, if you're living in your purpose, it's not you, you working or you actually working out the path that God has laid out for you. It's not a struggle. It's not a task. It's not a chore. Um, and, and for a lot of us, we're not doing that. We just settled. We've kind of settled for this is as good as it's going to get for me. Um, and I've talked about that in previous episodes in regards to, you know, like the relationships where we've settled for shitty relationships because we think that this is the best that we can do. So I thought today was a very important time for us to talk about this, this particular topic um, and hopefully, you know, inspire some, some, some of our listeners to decide to step out on faith and, and believe in themselves and take that shot because you can't hit shots you never take. So what do you guys think about that? Like you said, RJ, I think like it's a different um, like social climate and it's a different time in the world where a lot of things are happening, such as housing crisis. We got inflation. Um, we have the Great Recession where a lot of employers can't keep employees. Um, I think a lot of people are having to make really tough decisions when it comes down to maintaining, you know, a salary, um, a family. Um, and it just really make you it, it just as a therapist, it humbles me just to be able to um, really look at my life and see how things have transitioned. Because six to eight years ago, I was a, a cashier at Walmart. And that's a real interesting thing. And I was in grad school, uh, married at the time. So things do evolve. And I really um thankful that you're having this conversation living in your purpose because every day doesn't have to be the same and you do have control of your personal narrative even if you feel that things aren't as they should be um god is in control of things in addition to you have um the leeway to control your narratives too right right um i fully agree with jasmine and uh the first thing that rj mentioned earlier is you have to have this faith, right? Um, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If I can't see it, all right, the only way you're going to make it manifest, as Chasman was just talking about, that that's that manifestation, is, is you have to believe that things will get better. When I don't believe that things are going to get better and I'm just stuck in uh, existing, as RJ said, which is a very good word, because if you're not you don't have purpose, if you don't have a hope, if you don't have some sort of faith that things will get better, you're just existing. Uh, I see that a lot in clients that are in crisis. They're just trying to make it one day at a time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but the problem is it limits your options. You have to be purposeful about what you want to do for your future. You have to have it planned out. For Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, right? So you should have a plan. The Lord knows you should be aligned with what God has for you. But how do we get to that point, right? Well, uh, uh, faith is an action. You got to step out. Um, I've been unemployed before. Um, matter of fact, I just recently got laid off and, and, and immediately God opened another door for me. But uh, this in the situation is I've been unemployed before. I, I left the mental health center and I only had a part time job. Well, the reason why I did that, I said, well, this isn't helping me. I want to create my own narrative. Like Chasman said, I was purposeful about stepping out on faith. All right. Um, I even my girlfriend was like, Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> you don't want to have no job, a full time job. You need some benefits. I said, don't worry. 
the Lord will provide. Jehovah has always provided for me, even as an infant. But my, my main thing was I had a purpose on what I wanted to do. And uh, since my needs weren't being met at that time, I had to find uh, uh, the avenue to get to where I wanted to. I had to find the road. It was hard, but I stepped out on faith and I was like, yo, I'm going to do private practice. I'm going to do some side hustles, work part time. And I made the same amount of money or more that I was making at my full time job once the year was through last year. Um, and and I, I only worked full time for like six months. Um, I got another job and I went back to full time, which I kind of probably shouldn't have had done. I should have tried to put all my focus on building my, my brand and my name. But at the same time, I think it was just good. I needed some health insurance, folks. You know what I'm saying? I had to fix these teeth. But I mean, just being honest with you all, you've got to step out on faith because I made more money when I stepped out on faith and I trusted in the Lord because I know my purpose. My purpose is to be a social worker counselor. I already know this. I'm already walking my path. So when, when uh, you know, I had a little bit of challenge from uh, other people, some external noise, like you really going to leave the job? That, that's what you're going to do? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do because I know my purpose. You know, you know what I'm saying? So you have to step out on faith. Um, with that, I'm 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 a chill. I'm a chill because I'm and, getting too hype on this. And, exactly, but I'm I'm about to bring the hype on in and knowing your worth because people will talk fear into <laughs> your plans. People will have you doubting your purpose. People will have you just in your feelings. Like I remember when I left nursing school and um I actually like any time that I apply for anything just because my GPA was so high. I got accepted. Like I applied for Calhoun nursing program, got in there. UAH got in there. Anything that I did, it happened. But guess what? That was not a part of the plan. Anytime that I tried to apply pressure towards something else, God would throw all type of oppositions in there, like finances, like your car tear. And you like, God, what is you trying to tell me? Like, is it something else? So the crazy part was I had an advisor and she wrote me. She was like, you know, like you had a portion of a scholarship for um, the MSC program. And I was like, the counseling program? And I was like, um, that really doesn't suit my needs because I was thinking about going to law school. And I was a teacher at the time. And it was like, uh, that ain't me. But the crazy part was my mom, um, friend, she's a prophet. She was like, you know, pray for me and everything. And then I left nursing school, I think six months later. I was in grad school for counseling and then I was still teaching at a behavior unit. So all of my time there, all of it like added into like me going into the mental health field. But I never, ever, ever, ever would have thought I would be sitting here having this conversation. And we always think about equating uh, monetary um, or benefits as a blessing. But having God's divine intervention and his calling over our life is way more important than just being in any seat or being in any arena. Like I can sit at any table at Amen. any table, but if it's not aligned for my, my destiny or in my purpose, even being on the show with you all, I think it was ordained prior to um, we've ne never had conversations about doing the podcast together or anything, but like when God aligns you and you have purpose and feel that things will align and be beneficial to others because it has been. So that's how I look at things like we got to get outside of the mindset of thinking that a blessing is monetary or a blessing right. is attached to something that is going to benefit you. It's not. It doesn't have to always. It can be a blessing to someone else. And that's how I look at it. Like even with referral, referring somebody over to another therapist. If I'm eating, I want everybody else to eat. And that's just how I go. Like, you got to be a blessing in order to receive a blessing. But I'm going to get on rant because we no, are already sense. talking about <laughs> purpose I mean, and, it, and faith and the goodness of the Lord. Pastor I, I, RJ, I, <laughs> I, I, I definitely agree with, with everything that you guys have said. Um, for a lot of us, our issues of the reason we're not living in our purpose and we're not walking out, what is outlined for us is ourselves. Every single morning, you wake up. The competition is not between you and other people. That's the mistake that a lot of us make is we think that we're in competition with somebody else. The competition is between you and yourself because right. the gap between the life that you want to live and the life that you're currently living is mindset, focus, and consistency. You know, you can't be great by 
just halfway doing things. Like when you look at the greats in, in like say basketball, you know, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, when you look at them, what sets them apart from, from their peers? The amount of effort, the amount of time, the amount of energy that went into right. it. Michael Jordan talked about that one time when they were interviewing him and they asked him about potentially coaching. And he was like, no, I couldn't coach. He said, because my expectations that I have for myself, I would not be able to put them on someone else. You know, no different than Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, they asked him one time about him, you know, trusting his teammates and different things of that nature. And one of the things that he outlined was the fact that if I can't expect you to come to come to practice early and stay a little late after practice, I know I'm not gonna be able to trust you in the game. And and for a lot of us, we're standing in our own way. We are our own worst enemy. Um, we are our biggest detractor. We are our biggest naysayer. Um, but excuse me, not even just that, but a lot of times what happens is it, it, it impacts it. You know, we find ourselves being impacted by the people that surround us. Mm. Um, because again, like for me, you know, I'm a huge anime fan. Uh, most of the shirts that I wear on this show are anime. Um, and one of the core themes in most anime that most of the popular ones that people watch, um, there's the main character and then slowly and steadily throughout the series, he starts to develop a team of people that are around him. Um, normally, the first or second person, normally it was an adversary, but through mutual respect of combat or whatever they went through, they grew to respect each other. And so they act as a foil. The All the, the members of the team act as a foil to each other, pushing each other to be better, helping each other to be better, working on things together because steel, steel sharpens steel and diamonds cut diamonds. And so you get better because the other people around you make you want to be better. And for a lot of us, we don't, we, you know, and I talked about this in, in, the, in the relationships episode where, you know, we, we have boo birds where people who will tell you that you're not smart enough. They'll tell you that what your ideas are, what your ideas are, are not good ones or that you don't need to do this or you don't need to do that. And, you know, I'm going to say, tell you, tell you now, like I told you then, um, if people aren't adding and multiplying in your life, they're dividing and subtracting out of it. Because right. again, you know, you need people, not, a, not all the time, but we as human beings need people. We need human interaction. You can't go through life by yourself. You can't go everything, go at everything alone. Um, so you need people. You know, sometimes to cheer you up and to cheer you on and to be that 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 inspiration, that motivation. But a lot of times you're going to have to put suck it up and put forth that effort all by yourself. You know, sometimes you're going to have to be in the gym by yourself. Um, right. You're going to have to be outside doing the work by yourself. It doesn't always have to be in front of people or with other people. And I feel like for a lot of us, we get so caught up, like you said, Chasman, in the monetary game. Mm -hmm. You know, all money is not good money. Mm -mm. You know, and, you know, like P. Diddy and, and Biggie said, more money, more problems. A lot of people don't really realize that. You know, I I experienced that firsthand at my at my job where everybody is chasing money. Everybody's chasing titles, you know, positions and, you know, and 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 just jocking all the time for a spot. But the thing is, when you get the spot, there comes more responsibility. <clears throat> with that spot. And stress. And it, and, and stress, stress. And, stress. And, and and there's going to be more work that you're going to have to do, more effort that you're going to have to put in. You know, so you talked all this talk because you wanted that spot. Now and that you got the spot. Compromise, too, because most of the time when you get in these positions, there is way more ethical dilemmas that you deal with than mm -hmm. you work when you are in lower level positions. And your integrity typically shows like in most positions, right. like I've noticed the hierarchy. Like you see like people decision making, like it doesn't affect them. It mm -hmm. affects people at the lower level. And you're like, dang, like how could you make that decision? Because I remember working at Walmart and it was a whole um, problem with bonuses. And they were like, well, you know, the manager got her bonus, but the lower end workers didn't. No. And even I mean, during COVID too, we've seen that a lot. So even now it's, it's real different. Like you notice people where they're, um respect lies you notice where their um ethics like like even like mindset you can really tell by people decision making now and it's really strange as a therapist too to see how a lot of the clients perceive things too just from being on the other side of even our decision making like with mm -hmm. the committal process and you know being able to take somebody's freedom pretty much so right. it, i mean it's right. it's serious like people don't understand like 
it is. <laughs> so it's like putting people in jail, like a judge had that authority. And yeah, I mean, I mean, I have have your purpose and your mindset has to be aligned because even with me now, I can't have internal chatter. Like if someone's saying yep. they want to kill themselves. I, because my mind is like, well, I got this problem over here. You got to handle this. Plus, I got my own personal stuff. When when you in the like a purpose driven position, you cannot be sitting up here and listening to everything that's going on. The internal, the external. Got the boo birds over here. You got best friend over here having issues. Your cousin over here trying to ask you, can you help them get out of jail? The family member over here got to go for me for the funeral. And you like, she's. I mean, most times when you, like I said, when you are doing things and, and it is divine that you are supposed to be doing this, a lot of things become effortless for you. Your decision making is just that much more crystal clear because you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be doing that. Right. You know, like we all have gifts that we're born with. We all have things that we're supposed to be doing. Um, like for me as a kid, I remember my, my uncle used to call me professor. You know, he still calls me that now. <laughs> He still call, he still calls me that now because I am very good at learning things and explain and breaking things down in ways that other people who are not familiar with something can do it and not be a subject matter expert on it. Like my brain just looks at things at you know looks at things differently than other people. And so even now as a therapist, you know essentially a, a huge part of what we do is education. It is right. you know talking to someone and helping them understand some of our pe some of our people have limited education if any education at all i have some clients who can't read so right. navigating things like going to a doctor's appointment sitting down and and explaining medications you know so sp explaining to somebody who has limited education or is severely mentally ill or had some sort of traumatic brain injury i mean again if i wasn't moving in my purpose if this wasn't something that you know i was built to do it'd be a struggle. I'd be burned out by now, mm -hmm. right. you know? And, 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 and I mean, to me, like I said, like it, 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 when you were made to do this, it moves your spirit, it moves your soul. Like, it's not something that you, you, you just know you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You right. just, you, you just know, like me and my sister, we were watching this baking show yesterday for kids. And so this little girl was on there and she was, she wants to be a doctor. So at eight years old, she she could tell you every single bone in the human body and where it was. Now this show now this show is about bacon. At eight years old, I don't I don't I couldn't even at at thirty five I can't tell you all the bones that are in my hand. But she could tell you every single bone in the body at eight. And and just watching watching some of these little kids make I mean and and the stuff that they were doing it wasn't like they were just baking brownies or baking cookies, like they were like designing cakes and everything. And this little kid was able to do this. And I mean, he won every single challenge. And so I'm like, yeah, he, that's, that's going to be something he doing. You know, he, he's made for that. The other kid, they were, they were, they were struggling with it. He was making it look like it, like it was easy. Like it was yeah. light work for him. Right. And, and, and so those are things where that's how, you know, you know, as a, as a person, as an observer, you know that this is somebody's purpose. This is their, this is what they're supposed to be doing when it's, when you can see them and it's just effortless, effortless for them. When you're watching right. Kobe Bryant sink that jumper because you knew that's what God put him on this planet to do, you know, or you watch a, like for me, I watch the animal planet a lot. You watch a lion take down a gazelle because God made, made that lion to be able to do that. Right. And for a lot of us, we, are not obsessed with the things that with our goals. Um, right. one, one of the guys I watch on YouTube a lot, C.T. Fletcher, you know, the Compton super, Superman, he talked about how bodybuilding and weightlifting was, was his beautiful obsession. You know, how he was obsessed with that, <clears throat> was making, you know, making himself the best version of himself. And for a lot of us, we, 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 we have goals that we have, that we set for ourselves. I want to be married by 35 or I want to have this job by, by, by age 22 and I want to be able to do this and do that. But are we doing the things necessary to achieve those goals for ourselves? Right. You know, when it, when it becomes an obsession, you can block out the distractions, the getting up early, the eating right, the, you know, not hanging out with your, your homeboys, you know, drinking on Fridays and stuff like that. When you are obsessed with achieving your goal and doing the things that you set for yourself, 
those things become in, inconsequential to you at that point. Right. You know, they, they, they what you were talking about goals are things that people uh, sometimes take for granted, right? Um, especially when I, I'm trying to educate people uh, on goal setting. That's something that so I was never really taught that until I went to school. Um, you know, I'm talking about uh, uh, college. college. I'm not yeah, exactly. high school. Um, and they taught me about smart goals, right? So I was able to break down into smaller steps how I reach larger goals, how I reach certain things that I would like to obtain, right? And and if these goals are lining up with uh, the things that I wanted to do in life, and are they lining up with my purpose? Um, because your purpose sometimes does not get revealed to you until a little uh, later on in your life. It doesn't, not everybody's like the eight-year-old child who knows every bone in the body. Not everybody's like that. Um, they have to go through a series of trials. David had to go through a series of trials before he was the king. He had to actually live in the king's house and be a servant before he was the king. There's a lot of different steps you have to take. But one thing in mind is that you need to have a goal. David was given a goal by Samuel. People forget about that. Samuel had already told him what he was, what he needed to do. So he, mm -hmm. he was purposeful about what he was doing after that. He was very purposeful. And the same thing with us. You know, yes, God has plans for all of us, right? And we want to be in our purpose so we can take that gift that we have and use that gift in return to serve God, right? Um, and, and it's a long process. But once you start setting these goals, it will help your goals and God's goals for you align. You have to start setting them, though. And I think a lot of our people perish for lack of knowledge. Um, I've met so many people, when, especially when I work at the mental health center, and I do a class on smart goals. And the main, the only thing I would hear is, I want to get my driver's license, or I want to get a car. Yeah, exactly. The instantaneous <laughs> type of situation. I don't right. want to put in work. And faith without work is what that's what we did. Right. It, it ain't no, it's, it's nothing. Like, it's not gonna you're not that. putting in the work. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, it becomes one of those things where I'm glad you, you, you talked about, you brought up the fact about goals, you know, like, and, and I explain this to my people all the time. You have to look at, you know, life like a ladder. You know, you don't just go from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder right off the bat in right. one step. Say your goal is to, I want to graduate college. Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to apply to college first because you ain't graduating if you ain't even applying. You know, right. then once you apply, secure financial aid. Now that you got financial aid, uh, you know, get in, get enrolled in classes. Now that you enrolled in classes, now you got to do the study. You got to pay attention to class. You got to pass the test. Like there's and, and these are things that you do in sequential order. Um, the, the, the thing that and, and something you touched on, uh, the, the trials and the tribulations and the struggle. A lot of us don't want to struggle. A lot right. of us don't want to be tested. Mm -hmm. But but the thing is this right here. The test, the struggles, the trials, the tribulations are what are preparing you for who you're supposed to be. Because just imagine you prayed for something. Lord, please bless me with be, ha, being a millionaire. If you never went through any struggle, God drops a million dollars in your pocket or in your bank account, in your hands, your cash app, your Venmo, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever pay application mm -hmm. it is. He drops a, a cool million, a cool million to you or two million or a hundred million. You blow through it because you 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 were not ready for it. And for a lot of us, you know, we don't really understand. Like we talk about the storms in our life. A lot of times the storm that is in your life is one, you or two. Um, you are the problem. <laughs> yeah, you are the problem. Or number two, the storm is clearing the obstacles out of your way. You know, it's preparing you for, you know, what is to come at the end of the race. Like a lot of us, we, we, we see life as a race instead of a marathon. You know, when you, the pace that you, that you would have in a hundred meter dash or a hundred yard sprint is not the same that you would have for, uh, a 20, what a marathon is what, 26 miles? You know, it's not the same yeah. place that you would have for, <laughs> for, for a 26 mile marathon. It's just not, it's not the same. And, and so for a lot, yeah, but and and for a lot of us, we we want to do what's convenient for us. We want to do what's easy for us. We want to do what what we've always done. But if you're trying to have things that you've never had, you got to be willing to do things you've never done. You got to be willing to move different. You got to be willing to struggle. You got to be willing to to grind if you're trying to shine. And I mean, 
But that also comes with the, the added benefit of understanding and learning things about yourself. Because for a lot of us, we don't know ourselves. Mm -hmm. We think we know ourselves, but we don't. Right. So when you struggle, the struggle is what's going to bring out the real you. Exactly. It's going to bring out. It's going to bring out the. It's going to bring out the integrity. It's going to bring out. You know the consistency. It's going to bring out the the growth and development. It's going to bring out all the things that you're supposed to. That you know the the, the worst and the best of you. It's going to bring all of that out. Right. You know because for me, you know that's how you really truly learn about people is when you go through stuff with them. You be at your worst. And and that's how we are able to um, educate and build clients back up because you don't typically get to mold people back into health or get people back into good shape unless you see them at their worst. Mm -hmm. Right. At their lowest. Because and you you un you've unyield you've un you shed everything, literally. You had to right. in order to be in that state. And when you're in the vulnerable state, you're more open to taking advice. When people yes. be up here, they ain't listening. Like, they like, oh, well, mm. whatever. You know, I got money. It's good. Whatever. Got the car I want. Got the whatever. You know, like, that's when people are more vulnerable and able to listen. Like, I see that from just in the clientele we deal with. Not even that for myself. Like when you go through the worst, you're at the point where you have no choice but to self-reflect. And yep. was I the problem? Like, how do I fix this? What can I do better the next time? Um, as you said, that's where goal setting take place is in your most uncomfortable state ever. Like being vulnerable too. It's like going through your worst, I think creates a more consistent person. And as you said, RJ, Resilience and build resilience. Like yes. I, I say, I thug anything out now because I've been at my worst. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you start to actually, when you survived the struggle, you start to look for it at that point. Yeah, it's you, like I it's, see it coming. Yeah, you see, you see, see, you, see you you see it coming, and you start to be proactive instead of reactive. Or you know, like like uh, my man CT Fletcher was saying, pain has become a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I I welcome I welcome pain. Because on the other side of pain is is deliverance. Right. And and so for a lot of us, again, we want to do what's comfortable for us. We don't want to struggle. And so in not struggling, we're willing to settle. We're willing to stay in the same place at the same job, making the same chicken change money, not growing, not developing, not being a better version of ourselves. And then we want to complain. And, and be so miserable my, with everybody and, else. And, and, and be miserable. And so my thing is like when, you know, like my coworkers get to complaining about how little money they're making. My thing is like, like I tell them every time, you can't, you can't be, you can't demand LeBron James money, but you're playing like a scrub off the bench. Right. When we can't <laughs> trust you, with, we can't trust you with this one or two things without oh, you fumbling the bag. I'm not, I'm not going to trust you with a lot of money. What am I paying no. you for? What am I, if, right. if I had to pay you strictly on effort, you'd get zero dollars and zero cents because you provide zero dollars and zero cents worth of effort. And so my thing is you have other people that I work with, you know, that all three of us have worked with where you see them, they go through it, you know, because they're willing to do things that other people aren't, you know, they're willing to do other things that other people aren't. So when they complain, I can, I can, I can deal with them complaining because I see you, I see you picking up the slack where other people, other people drop it. Yes, yeah, a legitimate complaint because I see you picking it up. But my thing is, like I said before, most of us, we don't want to struggle. You know, we don't want to struggle. We just want to be, con we're, we're content with, with being where we're at. And because we're content with being where we're at, we never accomplish anything. Like my dad, you know, and I used to think my dad was crazy when he used to tell me that when I was in, uh, when I was uh, starting off college, he was like a lot of people, because to me, it was a no brainer. Like I didn't initially want to go to college myself, but once I got in college and I started seeing certain doors open for me because I had the, I had certain levels of education. I'm like, it's a no brainer. Why doesn't everybody go to college? Exactly. Right. Right. But what my dad explained to me was the fact that some people never go to college because of the fact that they're scared of stepping off their square. They're scared right. of stepping out of their small little town or leaving the people behind, you know, because that means I got to start all over with brand new people in a brand new place. Um, right. Scared because, of success, scared of, scared of failure. Yeah. All those things relate to that. But, but you can't achieve anything if you never, if you never take any chances. Never scared, you know, scared money don't make no money. Jeez. And so, you know, for me, you know, my, my life experience was different because, again, I grew up, 
you know, my parents being military. So we moved every two to three years. So I had to go through that every two to three years growing up as a kid. Um, so I didn't really, I don't really form attachments to people like that because again, packing up and moving two to three years, packing up and moving year and a half, we packing up and moving. So it wasn't anything for me to do that when I, when I started college, whereas some people, they've never left their small town before. This is their first time being away from home. This is their first time having to be responsible for themselves by themselves and get up and go to class that, you know, when people talk about the, the high dropout rate or the high failout rate for freshmen, that's why, mm -hmm. you know, it's not because of the freshman 15 or, you know, the parties. No, for a lot of people, they've never had to they've never had to worry about doing anything for themselves yeah. other than being this one small little box. Or relinquish and, control because in K through right. twelve you control to yeah. every hour, every, every second of your day. Every facet, you know, you know and, and and most states have laws where you gotta go to school. You either go to school, right. your parents get locked up. Right. Well, if you think about it right, uh from birth, we're told what to do. Uh, we're actually being controlled, like Chaskin said, right? Somebody's always telling you what to do. Someone's always directing you. Someone's always coaching you. Someone's always telling you what's wrong and what's right. By the time you get to 17, 18, uh, you, you get a little more autonomy and you're able, especially in our society here in America, I've seen it a little different in Europe. Um, they, they give their children a little more autonomy, but we start giving our kids autonomy by the time they're 16, 17, right? Uh, when, they're a junior in high school or something like that. Here, here's the keys to the car. Here's this or that. But they're always used to taking direction. So we're building a culture where these type of kids are, are, are either going to be followers, all right, um, or some of them are buck against the system, become a little more rebellious and, and, and uh, usually become a part of the criminal system. Right. Or you have those people who are who will embrace who they really are and become a leader. Um, and, and, and that's few and far in between. And that's the problem. A lot of people can't think outside the box because someone's always been thinking for them. Yeah. And good or bad. The people who are thinking for them don't always have to be very highly intelligent people. They don't, you know, we, we all three of us had pretty good parents who, who were able to guide and direct us the right way. But not everybody has that situation. I've seen that as a social worker. And so have you all in the mental health center. So imagine them. They're taking instruction from someone who uh, has a fifth grade education. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or been in and out of prison. So we have to understand that people are kind of taught to conform. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's hard for them to change their behaviors. If they grew up in a small town and they've never left and everybody else around them kind of worked in the same little small town in the same little factory, uh, they can't think outside the box. And not that they can't, they have difficulty thinking outside the box. Well, I mean, I think that goes back to like, like what I was saying earlier about you have to be like in, in tune with yourself and have to be obsessed with what your goals are. Like you said, you have to, have, you have to set goals for yourself. And it starts, starts at a very, very early age. Like when I was talking about that little girl at eight years old, knew she wanted to be a doctor. She wanted to be a pediatrician. She knew that at eight years old. For me, I knew, I knew what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I mean, initially I wanted to be a rooster, um, until I figured out humans couldn't, humans couldn't be chickens. But I mean, ever since then, I've been, you know, walking on the path, you know, to help people. And to, you know, help people be the best version of themselves. I mean, for most of us, as I said, most people are not obsessed with their goals um, because they either don't think that they're worthy of them or they feel like they're out of reach or out of, yeah, I just can't touch it. It's very easy. I, fi I find that it's very easy for most of us to dream about where we want to be. Um, but between where you want to be and where you actually are, there's a lot of things you have to do in between those two, in between those two points. There's right. sacrifice that you have to do. There's effort, there's time, there's energy that you have to invest in what you're trying to do if you hope to be that that best version of yourself. And all of us know, you know, if you're honest with yourself, you know what you're doing presently, if it's for you or not. You know. Right. You know. You know. <laughs> you know. I mentioned you know. that earlier. She's like, man, I was a cashier at Walmart. She already knew that wasn't her purpose. That, yeah. exactly. she already knew. Now, some people, and, and I worked at Walmart, some people you knew they were going to be lifers yeah. at Walmart. Yeah, but, that was their purpose. That that was that was that was it for them. But other people, you knew this wasn't it for them, you know. And and so for a lot of us, like for me, I always go back to the animal thing. 
even when you look at lions, for example, you can take a lion that's raised in captivity its entire life. It only knows the inside of this cage. There's a reason they got to put keep a lock on that cage. Because right. when they, as soon as that cage comes open, that lion knows I'm going outside. I might be inside this cage, but there's more to life than what's inside of th these four walls. So for most of us, we know when we're living inside of like the lion living inside this cage, that there's more to what life has to offer us than what we're currently experiencing. But for a lot of us, we just settle. We're I'm OK. I'm OK. I'm OK. For me, I'm never OK. Enough. Enough is never enough. Um, and for me, I love the struggle. As my dad says, there's no confrontation I don't like. <laughs> so, you know, I don't run from confrontation. I, I run to it, you know, because, again, I know that on the other side of the confrontation, um, it, I'm going to be a better I'm going to be I'm going to be a better person for it. You know, the struggle, the heartache, you know, you know, anything I had to sacrifice, it needed to go in the first place. Because again, right. if it wasn't adding and multiplying in my life, it was subtracting and dividing from me. It, it was standing in the way of me being, being the best version of myself, you know, having, you know, maximum output. But for a lot of us, we don't want to have those real conversations with ourselves. I have conversations with myself all the time. Me too. <laughs> I, I, you know, I ain't gonna lie, you know, I, I do. You know, yeah. I be having, like, a lot of times I put headphones in to make it seem like I'm on the phone so people won't think that I'm, I'm crazy talking to myself. But I will literally have conversations with myself where I'm planning things out. I'm planning things out. I'm working my way through things mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Um, I'm, 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 you know, providing pep talks to myself. You know, now again, I'm not, when I'm talking to myself, I'm not talking in like a, a, a different accent or a different voice, but you know, I'm talking to myself as though we're two separate people. Yeah. Right, right. The internal and voice, the internal voice gotta, yeah, the internal voice gotta keep you, your own and, head, like, every morning right. you should be there. Like, my head is like, Tia, like, talking to me, like, mm -hmm. you need to make this day the best day. You have somebody's life in your hand. You control what you right. do. Your narrative, like, I, I think, like, we devalue um, just being able to direct ourselves mentally like people don't understand like manifestation um affirmations like these things really do impact you greatly like you said rj having these conversations with yourself like some days i get off from work and be like dang what could i've done better like why was i so tired today for you sure need to, right. you need to do better like get more rest like and and, and these are conversations we could have like you know, like what happened yesterday? Was this bad? Well, that's a part of mental health. That's a part of mental health. You should do a self assessment exactly. daily. Self it, why am I dragging today? That. Why am I thinking don't. negative today? Exactly. And why? Why are you afraid? Why don't you want to know what's going on in your body? What's going on in what sensations you're feeling? Why are you avoiding that body scan? Why are you avoiding that mental scan? What is going on with that? What are you know? That's what I ask clients. Like you should be doing a self assessment daily. Daily, because I mean, having a, a self-assessment means that you have to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, we don't we don't want to take responsibility and say that I'm the reason that I'm fucked up. <laughs> I'm I'm the reason I'm the reason that I'm broke. I'm the reason this relationship didn't work out. Like nobody wants to have that honest conversation. No. And as 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 providers, one of the things that we talk to our clients about is what insight, right? Yeah. And right. in, in, in order to get past where you are presently, we have to have some level of insight. You know, there has to be some level of insight where you take ownership for I have I have a mental illness. I have to take my medications because without taking my medications, my illness goes unchecked. My illness is now controlling me rather than me controlling my illness. So by having insight and taking ownership for your illness, guess what? The Ill illness ain't controlling you. You in control of it. So for a lot of us. The reason we are in the spot that we're in is because we are the we yeah, as I said in previous episodes, you're the storm, you're the chaos, you're the poison, you're the problem. And I mean, for a lot of us, when we stop being in our own ways, right, you you'd know, be surprised, you know. you'd be surprised what you're able to achieve. One of the best lessons I ever learned in life was knowing when to shut the hell up. Because, like for me, a lot of times I block my own blessings because I got a smart mouth and I say something. You know, I think right. it and I'm saying it. Um, other times, you know, I felt like I always had to get somebody told, like I felt weak or I felt less of a man because I didn't respond to somebody. So I'd be in school getting put out of class because 
I got to put on Deaf Comedy Jam. Somebody said something slick to me, the whole class would stop because they got to hear what RJ going to say back. Then next thing right. you know, I say <laughs> something snappy back. You know, it's like wilding out. Everybody, everybody, the whole class has been disrupted. And he's like, get out. He's, right. he's, he's like, right. get out. And so my thing is, I thought I was being cool doing that. But not realizing, you know, then what I understand now is I put myself at a deficit because now I'm behind in whatever he was teaching because I just right. got, got put out of class. So certain doors closed in my face because I stayed being one of those people always had something to say. I stayed being one of those people that was in my own way. My my anger, my, you know, my attitude, you know, my mouth was just always in my own way. And it wasn't until. I stopped being my own worst enemy and I got out of my own way. I started shutting up more and listening more and being more thoughtful about what I say in regards to just responding to everything because I'm, you know, you know, a lot of people, I'm gonna let y'all in on an insider secret. Everything does not require a response. He, that's right. True. right. Yeah. Well, look, in the streets, they tell you, they say you got to let some things get by you. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. you know Close mouth. The house prison dudes will tell you that. Just let some things get by you. Don't be in everything because that's exactly. when folks get killed. Exactly. You know what I mean? You let it get by you. Go ahead, RJ. Finish. Stick to the code. Stick to the code. Stick but to the I mean, code. But, don't be telling. Keep your mouth closed. Yep. But for a lot of us, like I said, we are in our own way. And so then we want to blame other things. You know, oh, if I hadn't got pregnant, you know, when I was at 16, I would have been this or I would have been that. Or, oh, if I hadn't. A, gotten if you hadn't got pregnant i'd be playing in the league or you know and like just different stuff you see and 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 those are excuses and one thing that i was taught about excuses is, is are excuses are tools of the incompetent used to build monuments and nothingness as long as i dwell on excuses i shall seldom succeed and for right. a lot of us we just live in and build and live and build you know houses full of you know made from excuses you are where you are one, a lot of times because of you and the decisions you make and the people you surround yourself with. And for a lot of us, if you take a stock, you take stock of where you could be had you made better decisions and and or or surrounded yourself with positive influences, people that were going to push you to be better, not push you to be better because it was something in it for them, but push you to be better because it was what was best for you. Right. You know, a lot of us are, would be so super successful. That's why, you know, for me, I harp on surrounding yourself with people who are going someplace. Right. It's cool to hang out with people, you know, because you have something in common with them. Right. But, right. but if they're not helping you be the best version of yourself, what am I hanging out for, with them for? Right. Can't hang well, with yes, man. Yeah, and, and exactly. You don't want someone who's always saying yes to any nonsense that your mind comes to because, you know, what I mean, it, especially if, it, who knows, you might have a negative mind that day. If you say yes mm -hmm. to me, we go rob a bank. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. My mind's one of the worst places in the world to be some days. Right. Um, but, but what you were talking about that, that all goes back to bringing us back to the original perspective of this conversation. Right. Uh, you have to be purpose driven when you're aligned in your purpose. You're doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. All right. You're creating this narrative and you're going to be surrounding yourself with like minded people. Uh, why the three of us are on this show, why I, I, I only really talk to people in the medical field or, or I only really talk to people who are uh, social workers and, and, and nurses and doctors. I, I have to do that so I can keep my mind focused on what my purpose is. Right. Um, and, and overall, I want to be able to say, hey, uh, when I'm having a problem, I need someone who's going to be able to give me the type of advice I need. I don't want to call somebody who doesn't do anything with the social work field, doesn't understand a case conceptualization, doesn't understand uh, a counter transference or transference. I need to be around someone who's going to help me in these steps that are necessary for me to become an uh, in, uh, independent clinician. So I ha I've been surrounding myself with nurse practitioners. Uh, you know, therapists. I got two therapists right next to me, right? I've done that on purpose because I have a purpose, right? And I know that only certain people are going to be able to help me to get there. So I've, I've individually started putting these people in my lives over the last five years. I, I did it purposefully. I was intentionally doing that. So uh, now my mind is thinking differently because when I was around people who were in and out of jails and institutions, right, uh, they couldn't help me 
on this walk. Uh, matter of fact, I had to lose a few people. One of my good friends, uh, when I start, first started going back to college, he overdosed. Um, he was he was uh, stuck at the dope man's house and he called me. He's like, I need a ticket out to Huntsville. And I was like, man, I said, uh, man, I, I'll come up with some money. I'd love to help you. But I was busy. I had school later on. Uh, I had to study for school. I had school in the morning and he had called me kind of later on in the night. And I was like, man, I'm gonna get back to you, bro. I promise. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna get back to you. I get back to you. But we weren't lined up. We weren't lined up doing the same type of things. He was in the dope house. He was talking about how he spent all his money on dope and he was in trouble. He wanted to leave and come to Huntsville, Alabama to get away from where he was uh, somewhere in Richmond, Virginia, somewhere. I didn't have time for him. Why? Not saying that, that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, he wasn't, his life wasn't worth anything. It's just that what I was doing, what I was building at that time, uh, our, our goals weren't aligned. He was using dope. So next yep. thing I know, the next day I talked to one of my good friends and she said, do you know Andy's dead? I said, I just talked to him last night. She said he overdosed shortly after I talked to him. Broke my heart, guys. Broke my heart. But it put things in perspective of who God is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I was still with him, I would have to be doing the same thing, right? <laughs> I mean, even if I wasn't shooting dope, it doesn't matter. I would still be Selling on that trajectory. Selling or using yeah. whatever. Come on. All right. So, you know, I, I hate to be like that, but in your personal life, you need to do a self-assessment. Are the people around you, are they help, helping build you up? Are they helping you uh, achieve these goals that you've set for yourself? If everybody around me doesn't have a driver's license and doesn't have a car, uh, and I want a driver's license and a car, I need to start surrounding me, surrounding myself around people who are doing those things because I'll probably only do the things that I can see. Me and RJ, we talked about that in the show. Kids are like that. Right. They do the things they can see. They model. They imitate. Well, if that's normalized. all I'm. Yeah. Right. Stuff that's, stuff that's normalized to you. You tend to do things that you see that that is close to you that you can reach out and touch. Exactly. You see, if your 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 parents are successful, chances are you're going to be successful, too. If right. your your parents go to school, you probably gonna go to school, too, because that's what you know. And And so I think that, you know, like you said, you have to surround yourself with the solid team. Your team, ha your team can't let you fail, um, because, again, you know, that becomes a knock on them because, again, if people aren't lifting you up and hold, you know, they're holding you back. And so I'm not saying that to say that, you know, you have to be better than other people, but everyone is not going to every everyone, every, everyone is not meant to be a part of this journey. You know, sometimes you outgrow people. You know, you know, who you were is not who you're who you're always going to end up at, end the story as. And, and you know, like I said, like for me as an as an anime fan, when you watch a lot of a lot of anime, the, the main character normally starts off as a person that's struggling. They start off as a person that's struggling. And normally by the end, they're the most powerful character in the entire show. How did that happen? Because of the struggles they went through. They outgrew some people. Some people got left behind. Some people, you know, fell off. It just that happens. And that's life. A lot of times what happens is we try to hold on to people and we try to drag them along for the journey. And I can right. tell you this right here. Yeah. If you happen to drag them, they they they, well, they shouldn't be on this journey. No. I mean, they're not walking in your purpose. They're yeah. not walking and in let me add this. Us people of culture and color have it yes. so bad wanting to take everybody with us. Mm. We hear the celebrities Preach. talk about I had to give them money and even now as a therapist, people, oh, shoot me cash out. Can you help me? Can you help me? But it's like. That's how, that's how MC Hammer went broke. Giving exactly. everybody a job. Right. Everybody can go with you on the journey. Everybody is not designated for your journey. Everybody is not destined to be with you on this journey. Like you said, you grow, you realign, you readjust goals. I may not be the same person I was. I wake up a different person every day just because That's right. of work. So right. you may be on the curb tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, being honest, like, yeah. if I feel you're not adding value, you got to go. It, it, exactly. And like I said, it's not from a place of I think I'm better than Negativity. you. Because a lot of people yeah. a lot of people take it that way of, oh, you think you're better than me because I've had person. to tell me that before. Oh, you know, oh, you, you know, because when I worked at Walmart, I worked at Walmart and I've had people tell me this and this used like it used to really make me self-conscious. 
Because for me, as an African-American man, you know, I've been told that I wasn't black enough. And so like I worked at the Walmart that I worked at and, you know, that was considered the stereotypical black Walmart. You know, almost everybody that works there is African-American. And it was right down the street from we know, the. We know which he, he, he's talking about. We know, we know, we and, I, and so, and, and so, um, and, and so it's down the it's, it's it's down it's down the street from the HBCU. So you know, everyone is like, oh, you know, I I had people tell me that, like, you need to come to the hood to see how real black people live. And so, like, I'm like, wait, what? So I'm not a, so so like for me I'd never heard that before. He I'd never in, in, in my in my 20 years of living because I was like I think I was like 22 23 at the time my 20 plus years of living I had never heard someone tell me that I wasn't black enough. Right. And and so you know like that like that made me self conscious for a long time and so I asked the girl I was like what do you mean I'm not black enough I need to come to the hood to see how real black people live like I'm a black person. You and she just like, she was like, I, you know, I didn't talk like a black person. I didn't listen to black people's music. I didn't dress like a black person. I didn't carry myself like a black person. So for me, all I knew was the way, was how, how I carry myself now. You know, right. I, I talked the way that I talked because my parents believed in speaking grammatically correct. Speaking English. grammatically correct. Right. You, so know, you know, my parents, my parents believed in, you know, you wearing your pants on your waist. When you talk to people, you look them in the face. You know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. No um, mumbling, none you know, of that. No, no mumbling. I wasn't yeah. allowed to mumble in my house. My mother yeah, would no. slap the daylights out of me. What are you mumbling for? Speak up, boy. Speak up. You know, you know, you know. Like, like my my parents, my parents didn't play any of that. So for me, I recognized then. You know, like you know, some of those people I was friends with, but I recognized then, like they couldn't sit at sit at my table. You know, because again, you're concerned about me not being from the hood instead of, hey, I'm glad that you're going to college. Right. You know, glad. you I'm, gl I'm glad you're trying to make it past what people think we're supposed to be doing. Like there was there was none of that. It was, you know, oh, you think you better than us. And I have I had I had this one girl tell me that, you know, you think you better than me. And I'm like, I don't think I'm better than you. But I know that there's certain things I'm just not going to do. I'm not I didn't you know, at the time I didn't drink. And I've never done drugs. So, you know, for her to, you know, her to invite me over to her house, knowing that those were things that they were going to be doing, what I look like going to do those, being at your house, and I know that I don't do those things. So when I tell her, no, you know, you know, I'm, you know no, I'm good. I, I can't go. Oh, you think, oh, you think you're too good. You think you better than us. No, but, but that's, that's, that's the, that's how people respond when you're actually trying to be different. Like, some friends used to get mad if you couldn't go out with them. Like, I'm like, I ain't going out no Friday night and spend no hundred dollars in the club. But what? Right. Right. I, that's For, irresponsible. I mean, that, that's, that's, a waste, that's a waste of money. Right? That's irresponsible behavior. But people in our culture don't see that. Uh, when I was in my 20s, you know what I'm saying? Me and my homeboy, we would drop $100, $150 in the exactly, club. Exactly, to be in the place. And drink okay. and, and leave. Look, I, I'm driving intoxicated. Don't know how I got home, right? But everybody's happy, you know what I'm saying, the next day, even though we're broke. Everybody's happy. Man, we was riding yesterday, man. We, we, get you seen you the picture, man. we, we turned up man, last night. What are you talking about? I done spent all my I money. I the new J's on, you know. Right. Yeah. It was, it I done spent all my money. Time. I'm not happy. I remember waking up not happy. And everybody <laughs> else was celebrating that. The they were celebrating me spending all my money. Listen, the rent is due next week. And then you had community right. action asking them to pay your light bill. Like, yeah. I don't understand. Help <laughs> Priorities, priorities. <laughs> I mean, I ultimately, what ends, what has to end up happening is you have to start to set those boundaries for yourself, what you're willing to allow to be a part of your life. Because as I, as I said in the episode in relationships, you got to think of yourself as a as a job looking to fill positions. And if my my overall goal is to get to this point or this thing in life then I have to surround myself and fill, fill the positions in my life with people who are going to help me get to that point. Like Khalil right. said, you got to establish what your circle is going to be. You got to establish, you know, having people who are going to hold you accountable because a lot of times we don't want to hold ourselves accountable. And by having the right people around you, you'll have people tell you, yo, you, tri you tripping. Like there have been times like where my friends in that moment, they're going back and forth with somebody. 
Now, in that moment, I didn't, you know, admonish them or tell them, hey, you was wrong. But after that conversation, after after that that moment was over, pulled them to the side. Hey, you know, you was tripping, right? <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know, you was wrong. Now, you're going to have to go back and apologize. I know you felt vindicated in that moment because you had to get that person told, but you need to go back and apologize. And this is why you were wrong. You know, not to be ugly or not to stun on nobody. But again, if I truly hold you as my friend, you know, because I don't use that term loosely. I don't right. fool with too many people. Like my, my sister says, I'm like a cat. You know, I, I'm friendly enough just to get fed. And then I don't want to be bothered with you after that. So <laughs> and I mean, she's very true in that. I, I don't like too many people like that. Um, but at the same time, if, if we're supposed to be friends, we should be able to hold each other accountable, you know, you know, and, and in a respectful way. You know, you should be able to come and tell me anything and I should be able to come and tell you anything. And we should be holding each other accountable. We should be holding each other to a standard because that is what is going to get you from here to here is not settling, is setting standards for yourself and working towards those standards right. in all facets of your life. If your goal is to be a millionaire, guess what? You got to you got to clean up your spending habits. You got to fix your credit. You know, you got to you have to you have to think like a millionaire. You then have to then invest in yourself as a millionaire. Go go read self-help books. Study from those people who are millionaires. Because again, right. how can someone who's broke and at the same point as you is in life help you get to that next level? They can't. They can't do number be a distraction and be a hurdle for you to have to overcome later on in life. So it is one of those things where you there's things that you have to be willing to do if you're hoping to achieve those goals. And for a lot of us, we're not willing to do those things. We're we're not. And, and which is why, like I said, it is one of those things that when you have an honest conversation with yourself, where do I want to see, where do I see myself in 10 years from this day? Forget about what happened before today. But if you stop and say, where do I see myself in 10 years from now? If you have a, have a goal, in, a goal set for yourself, write that down, you know, because it becomes real when you write it down. Right. You know, it's one thing to say it. And I was having this conversation with a client about this yesterday. It's one thing to say something. It's a different thing to walk it. You know, talking and walking are two, two entirely different things. Walking means that you're actually executing on what you said you were going to do. So exactly. the first step to getting to the walking is writing it down because now it's real because it's in front of you. You see it. And, and, and so then you start mapping out what you need to get done. And then as you accomplish the task, you, you <laughs> mark that bad boy off your checklist. You know, I want to go to school. OK, did I, 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 I applied to get into school. Mark that bad boy off. Then you move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And the reason you you create this checklist, rather it be physical or mental, is it is holding you accountable. You know, and then the, the next thing is don't tell everybody what you're trying to do. Right. The reason you don't right. tell everybody what you're trying to do is because you will have those people who will purposefully yes. look to undermine you and look to trip you up. Or they will look right. to dissuade right. you, yeah. you know, or they will look to dissuade you from achieving your goal. Because again, I don't want you to do better than me. And 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 some of the some of the fastest people to try to drag you down or knock you off your off your square are the people around you. They plotting on you anyway. Some of your yeah, some of your closest people. Mm -hmm. Some I mean, when you look at some of these people who are who like right now uh, in Atlanta, their their district attorney is hitting hitting uh, some of these rappers with Rico's. Rico cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody tell, tell, somebody tell him mm -hmm. it's, it's, already, it's already coming out. People are telling, mm -hmm. you know, right. and them same people that was with you, that, some them same people sitting in sitting in the music videos with you, hanging out with you, kicking it with you, committing crimes with you. Allegedly, they telling right. on you now. Well, so you, now, it, now you now you potentially about to do basketball. No, but that's where it comes in is the self-awareness like you be knowing like it's it's like we have all the intuition and in i like i've been places in my stomach just be like hurting and i'm like right I ain't anxious. your like, spirit said it's time to go just be like get up get up this ain't it go like several times and i remember one night um i think we went to a party and someone got the shoes it was a house party and i was like i'm glad i ain't stayed here because I already knew. I think I was probably like 18 or 19. Like back then, it was like house parties were common. Mm -hmm. But if somebody got mad, you in a real confined spot. Spot. Yep. You can't escape. You can't escape. So it was like, I'm just like, nah, this. Mm -mm. Well, this... you know, 
it's funny when you have to go through those things. A lot of young people will have to go through those things. I had to go through it. You're gonna, you should be able to learn from your mistakes. Mm-hmm. You should be able to put in place some of these things that you've learned and use them as stepping stones. Say, you know what? I've done that before. So then when the next time it comes, you can dodge it, move on, dodge it, move on, because you should be learning from these mistakes. And that's going to keep you on, on path for your purpose. When you can take all these things that you've been through, all I mean, because I know a lot of people don't have a good upbringing. They don't have supportive family members. They don't have encouragement, right? So when you're going through that struggle, take all these things that you're learning, all right? You should know what not to do if you're around someone who's irresponsible with money, right? Uh, You should know how not to treat someone if you're around someone who was abusive, right? Learn from these things. Don't model those things. Learn from those things and move forward. And, 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 you know, it's hard. It's very hard when you grow up in a, in a segregated area, it might just be you and these certain type of people. It's hard to think outside the box, but you have the internet. Kids growing up now, you you got the, the world at your fingertips. I, you know, I'm sitting back like I, I was a child of the, the early 90s, man. We, we had no internet service. Nah. I didn't get that till I was in my 20s almost. <laughs> you know, you, you have life is at your fingertips right now. There's no way someone can't go out and start to set goals and achieve them. There's no way you can't, with especially with all you need is a phone. A phone can help you do that. A phone records everything and dates and documents everything now. That wasn't like that in the past. They they have whole apps that will send you motivational, inspirational quotes right. every single day. You know, so like like you said, with the advancement of technology, there's no excuse. No zero excuse. zero excuse other than getting out of your own way. Because again, you know, we're, we're running out of time. Uh, so we got to wrap this up because uh, we would end up talking all day. Um, <laughs> be, be that lion that, it, that understands that there's more, more to life than what's inside the cage. You know, be that lion that's looking that as soon as that cage comes unlocked and, you know, the opportunity presents itself, you out. You, you getting out. You, ain't, you, you may not go out and go eat nobody or eat something. But you're going out to, to see what's out there and to experience what's out there instead of just existing. Because a life that is just existing is a, is a boring life. It's not a life worth living. And for a lot of us, and when I say not worth living, I'm not saying from a standpoint of wanting to end your life, but it becomes a life where you're just suffering through it. Right. You know, especially with today's day, today's day and age where we are seeing an influx of mental health issues and mental illness diagnosis diagnosis um, it is becoming a huge thing where people are suffering suffering mentally emotionally physically and spiritually um, because they're they're you know they're just kind of just going through life and a lot of people are suffering in silence and again like I said I want you know if you don't take anything else from anything I've said said in this episode to is to be that line be that line that no matter how bad things are no matter if this is comfortable for you or not you know that there's more for you outside you know that there's more there's more to life than what's inside these four walls and what your current situation is because your current situation does not have to be your permanent life right. it does not have to be permanent for you unless you allow it to be you know because some of the things we talked about in in regards to like resiliency you know these things that don't kill you I know it sounds cliche, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You learn from it, you grow from it. It helps you be a better version of yourself because of it. Right. Right. All right. And then I'm going to end and in, in, in and just say, get out your own way, lean into the struggle um, and look into the eye of the sacrifice. And you are definitely capable of living a purpose driven life. Yes. Yeah, many blessings to the listeners, man. Um, please subscribe. We can't tell you guys, uh, we, please subscribe, like it. Um, you know what I mean? We share want it. you guys to share, share it. with the friends, please. share it with the homies, share it with the cousins, mama. brothers, aunties. Right. You really enjoy everybody. Y'all yeah. everybody. Yeah. everybody. The boo birds. Yep, the boo birds. You know, maybe, babies, maybe, maybe we will turn everybody. them from maybe we will turn them from boo birds to regular people. You know? exactly. so, I mean, that's our overall <laughs> goal. Turn them from boo birds to regular people. 
So please, right. um, we ask that you guys, if you, you enjoy what we had to say, if you disagree with what we had to say, we ask that you subscribe because um, we are found on YouTube at Try Not to Overthink It. You know, subscribe, like, share, turn on your notifications so when we drop new videos, you guys will be notified of the videos and you'll see the new videos. Um, we're also on Anchor at Try Not to Overthink It as well as on Spotify at Try Not to Overthink It. Um, so we want you to, we ask that you like, subscribe, share what you heard today, what you heard here today, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Peace. Peace.